Here we have a cam locker. This is the old type locker, uh, which has been around a number of years. The way this locks is completely different to uh, other locking differentials. Um, in here you have uh, a series of teeth. There is a collar that comes down and locks on those teeth. And on the inside, there is a tube that locks into the diff itself. So this bit locks into the diff. And then there's another piece that comes down and locks on these. And that is activated by fork sliding up and down on here. Uh, this is different from the earlier version of this, which had very long, um, very long splines on the half shaft and locked by the collar coming across. The problem with that was if the if the half shaft had the slightest twist in it, the long slide splines then meant the collar couldn't lock up and down. But this is the one that's uh, now gone out of production, um, as Cam or all makes who now own Cam are no longer producing this. So one of the big problems with this is going to be getting spares and this has come into us for uh, an autopsy because the guy found some uh, bits in his oil. So we're going to take it apart and do a video of the cam old style locker. Um, they are actually an incredibly strong unit. Um, I've seen these horrendously abused and they are almost Neanderthal in the way they're built and very uh, prone to minor issues but they will still keep working. So back with the cam locker, it's held on with a, a very large array of 12 extremely long uh, bolts. These have a tendency to um, shear off, leaving you the enviable task of trying to remove a piece of 12.9 studding um, out of the uh, end. These, these here uh, actually hold the forged cross shaft in place, which I'll come back to in a minute, which is one of the good things. Um, but yeah, it's uh, slightly over-engineered with the number of bolts it's actually got in it, but I guess that's no bad thing. Also at the top here you'll see that the bearing, unfortunately, is a special. Um, as is, you can't get it anywhere. We have a limited stock of these and they're not cheap. Um, but basically it was a bearing that was designed by Kevin to allow clearance for the locking system. And it was a special that was made. Um, and you can't get them anymore. Inside the actual locker itself you've got a standard uh, Land Rover gear set um, which sits on a forged casing and the centrepiece with the gear on the other side um, and there's various plates and things that are, are there to space and pack out. We're back to a fairly stripped component this is the end flange with a normal RTC 3095 there are a million different threaded holes on these things because they are for a selection of different things. You can have a locker and you can have a limited slip locker. Uh, this is the other end flange which has got the special um, bearing on. This isn't in the best of health so it will be getting a new one and the whole lot's got to be cleaned up. Centre tube itself is just a very simple tube with bolt holes going all the way through. Slots for the four pin that holds the gears to go into which are then screwed down. Thank you the compressor. Now on the back here, these are early shims and as you can see this one is cracked all the way around there. The next one has actually got a nice big chunk missing out of it, um, as has that one as well. Um, and the last one, yeah that's no better either, that's got a whopping great crack. You can actually see the crack is running all the way around the centre area. So. Um, what is actually quite good is apart from the fact it's got this forged cross shaft which is remarkably strong I've, I've never ever seen one of these break um, it is it is a nice bit of kit um, and it's much better than the, the double cutout style that Land Rover use um, these are also used on the later um, V8 4 pin diffs this is an 18 mil pin centre so slightly smaller than some of the 20 mil pin lockers and standard Land Rover gears. So there's a few things here that will need to be put back together. Um, these plates are, are, are basically false plates just for packing uh, the gap out where the LSD pack would go. Um, same with the washers up here, they all look reasonably good condition. So it's actually not bad when you think that uh, this, these bits here have broken off and got mashed up inside and yet there's, there's very little wear on this gear. I mean we'll clean it all up and see what's what and then we'll start looking at putting it back together but all in all it will live again but as I said these lockers are pretty Neanderthal the Achilles heel being the long bolts when you undo them and worse the bearing on the end being a special 
So here we have the thrust washers that have come out of that diff. Um, and you can see what's actually happened is the four little holes, you can actually see uh, the crack is forming where it's almost joining the centres of the holes together. Um, these are these are the, I think these were the earlier cam type thrust washers and, and it is a, a fault that they have. Um, what we can do, and luckily I've got them, is uh, you replace them with ones without holes in um, and these don't crack um, and we'll be fitting a set of those although I have got some of the new ones with four holes in so if anyone wants to buy some thrust washers that are going to crack I'm your man don't know what I'm going to do with those, don't know why I've got them really but hey ho certainly the, the head bearing there is showing signs of quite heavy wear um, I think you can see the markings so that will be replaced as well interestingly enough I've just looked at my markings and I built this case in 2009 uh, it is actually pegged to casing number casing number 17 come home to say hello there we go so uh, big clean up and put the diff back together with the uh, new washers and some bolts and uh, do the video some considerable time later we have some clean bits so here we have the uh, end flange this has got to have a new um, bearing put on it, that's a standard RTC 3095, we got some packers and spacers, cleaned all the gears up, that's the uh, other flange which requires um, a special bearing to be put on, uh, more spacers, dog ears, then we got the centre there with the one of the shims, uh, the various nuts and bolts and the fossil bronze pad which will relinish, other gears all cleaned up, that's the forged centre cross shaft which does actually make this a very strong unit. Uh, the special adjuster ring at the back, carrier caps and uh, these are the four new shims that basically caused all the problems uh, these are the later type which are um, solid with no holes in so they can't crack and all we've got to do now is put that little lock back together so some considerable time later the cam diff locker all fully rebuilt uh, ready to go again for a, well this one was peg case number 17 so that's around 2009 which is hmm, six years uh, so it's done well I actually do actually quite like these uh, old style cam lockers um, I think the only problem with them going forwards is going to be spare parts um, although if that's the case I guess I might have to start looking at making spare parts for cam lockers but there we go old style cam locker and how it works.